Hello, this is Steve Sanangelo once again from the SRS Rock Report, and I'm glad you're joining me because I've got a new video update. It's called The Silver Price Surge, Due to Physical Buying, Not Paper Speculating. And I'm starting to see more evidence, more analysis, that what's actually driving the silver price more recently has been physical buying, not paper speculating. So let's get started. Now, this first chart, this is a silver chart. This came from my uh, last update last week on YouTube. And it's showing the COT report period, which goes from Tuesday to Tuesday. And then this was uh, two weeks, three weeks ago, and this was two weeks ago. I'll show you the last week. But what we can see, and I said that when silver shot up, and this was the last day on Tuesday, it hit 26.50 and then it came all the way down $4. And I believe that was actually due to the commercials, the big traders pushing the silver price down because they were underwater and they were liquidating. They pushed it down quickly and then they liquidated and they would buy them back and it pushed the price back up. That's why you saw this huge swing. So what's interesting, we had the price of silver two weeks ago in the COT report period went up $2.75, but we had a 14,500 liquidation of the net short positions. And over the longer term, what we're seeing, and this is very positive, I showed you this last week as well. Back in February, when the silver price was 1815, there was 100,000 net short positions right here. There's 100,000. And last week, when the price hit 2430, the commercial net short positions were 47,500, um, less than half. And that's a good trend. That means there's actually more physical buying than paper, because there's more paper, you see the price, you see the COT report net short positions increase. So this is the most current week. This is August 4th, the COT report. And we had a $1.40 increase in the silver price in this last reporting period. They did add some short positions, 3,700, but I think we're going to see that change this week. So again, there was the 18, 15 back in February. Now it's almost $2 more. So the difference is, is $8. And now it's about 51,000 net short position compared to 100. It's still in half. We're still trending lower as the price of silver moves higher. So in this newest week, and this is as of Friday, we still have Monday and Tuesday, it closes on Tuesday. But I do believe on Friday, here I said, highly likely days with large commercial net short position liquidations. I believe this was a day they liquidated a lot of these short positions right here. And I believe on Friday, they did the same. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens this week in trading. Now, this is a monthly chart of silver. And it's interesting that silver almost reached the 30 mark. And we call these even like 30, 35, 40, these are that we call a magnet levels. So silver at the price nearly reached the $30 magnet level. And it's important to close firmly above 2750 by the end of August. Again, this 2750 is a very important uh, support and resistance line. Silver needs to close above this in August to continue being bullish trend to move up to 35. Now, you can also follow my work on Twitter. I have a Twitter feed, the SRS Rock Report on Twitter feed. And again, technical analysis does mean something. The fundamentals push the price, but the technical analysis gives us an idea of what's happening in the market, where these prices are going to break out of, where they're going to uh, support and bounce off of. And this is a two hour intraday chart. When the price of silver shot up, Above the 2750 right here, this is that long monthly support and resistance level. It shot up, you could see it twice on the candlesticks. It came back and retested it, and then it went up to the $30 mark. And then we saw the big correction. And this is what's fascinating right here on these two candlesticks. It bounced right off of the 2750, and on Friday, it closed near the highs of the day. So with several bullish reversals off the 2750 level, it seems to be a good support level for silver next week. Again, 
All technical analysis tries to give us some idea of, of what's happening. There's no guarantees, but it's, it seems to be the trend that silver will continue higher this week. Now, before I get into some of the uh, information showing why the physical buying is driving the silver price, this is the last uh, indicator, and this is a quarterly chart. It's important to understand each, each uh, candlestick now represents three months of trading. And so there's a MACD level, which is down here. It's a technical indicator. And back when silver shot above the $15, level and that was on the quarterly basis that was an important resistance and support level when it shot about ab above it in 1979 the macd level was 250 when silver also shot above it in 2009 the macd level was 250 now since the huge consolidation of silver these past several years now that silver now has shot above the 15 dollar range the MACD level is at zero, it's much lower. So to me, there's much more explosive room for silver to move higher. And another indicator right here is the RSI overbought or oversold. And as we can see in 79 and 80, on the quarterly chart, it was extremely overbought. And also in 2010, 11, it was extremely overbought. Well, even though we've seen a nice movement Silver on a quarterly basis now is nowhere near being overbought. So it can move up a lot more. We could see it move up to 35. There's a lot more room for silver to grow, according to that indicator. Now, this is an article by uh, Monetary Metals. Uh, Keith Weiner does an excellent job talking about the, the, the gold and silver basis. And what that does, it gives us an indicator. If there's a tightness or... Uh, if there's plenty of silver or gold in the market or if there's a tightness. So silver explodes, but why? That's the title of his article. The silver market witnessed another explosive day. This was at midnight in London. The price of metal was 26.90. By 9 p.m. it had rocketed up to 28.95, a gain of 7.6%. This is not normal. But then again, we're not in a normal world. Mere speculation, question mark. Some speculators are betting that the dollar can make a record low in gold terms. It should do in silver terms as well. If gold should be 2050, then why shouldn't silver be 52? That would give us a gold-silver ratio of 41, which is not extreme. If the ratio moved to the opposite extreme from its March high of 31 ratio to 1, then 2050 gold should be 66. In other words, the price move would more than double its current level, assuming that the price of gold did not budge during such an epic event in silver. We do not offer this as prediction, just food for thought. When markets get moving, they can keep on moving longer than anyone would expect and move farther even when there are no fundamentals to drive the move. However, in his second, the second page here, Check the fundamentals. Are the fundamentals for silver waning? Let's take a look at the August 6th intraday fundamentals as shown by the silver basis, overlaid by the silver price. In phase one, we just have a falling basis with the price rising. That is a falling abundance of silver, even though it's become more expensive. This means people were buying metals, not futures. And in this phase two, we saw a difference, but in the last part of this uh, chart, we see the silver price move up quickly and the basis is trending down. So what to do? Yesterday we said this is not the same market as it was from 2012 to 2019 stack on. Today we say it again, this manic rise in the silver price will end someday, but to quote our friend Aragon from the Lord of Rings, today is not the day. So. What Keith Weiner is saying in his monetary metals updates is that this is physical buying that's pushing the price because the abundance, the tightness is in continuing to increase in the market, in the silver market. And in my last chart, I spoke about this last week that there's a lot of silver going into the silver ETFs. We don't know if all that silver is in the inventory, but if we, if, if a, lar a large percentage of it is, 300 million ounces moved over in just the last four months. 
that's a lot of silver. And then we had about 30 million ounces of physical bar and coin demand. Doesn't seem like a lot, but there were shutdowns of mines. There were shutdowns of uh, the supply refineries in the U.S. Mint and the Canadian Mint. And then I say, even though there was about 100 million ounce decline in industrial and jewelry silver demand, and then someone had made a uh, point that because there was 40 million ounce decline in, in the mine supply, most of it from Mexico and Peru, this would actually be a plus, and that might be correct, which would make this net change even worse, it would be 230 million ounces. So what we're seeing, there's a lot of demand for physical silver with all the problems that are having, happening in, in the financial markets, the government's propping everything up. I believe investors now are moving and trying to acquire more physical silver, and that's just going to continue to push the price up even higher. So I wanted to thank you for checking out my re most recent uh, Precious Metal Update. Please also check out the srsrockreport.com uh, website. We put out between four or five articles a week. And I want to thank you once again for watching this last video. Have a good day.